It's a very Thanks. special occasion to have um, my dear friend, Pempit Sering, uh, Sik Young, Pempala. Uh, and they broke off negotiations with, uh, with Tibet back, you know, a little over 10, over 10 years ago. They said that they will not resume negotiations and talking to Tibet until <clears throat> Tibet recognizes that it has been part of China forever, which is not true. It's a lie. Uh, can you address this issue of the historical question? Was there ever any point historically when Tibet was a part of China? No, that is why we have been working with the U.S. Congress over the last two years to get this Resolve Tibet Act. Because U.S. is the only government that has a law on Tibet, the 2002 Tibet Policy Act that has been amended to Tibet Support and Policy Act of 2020, which added the element of re reincarnation of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And over the last two years, we have been working with the Congress to get this Resolve Tibet Act passed, which was signed by President Joe Biden into a law this July. This law talks about four main issues. Because the Chinese government uh, says that there's no Tibet problem that Tibet is a socialist paradise, then I say, if Tibet is a socialist paradise, then why don't you allow other people to see the paradise for themselves, whether it's a paradise or a hell? So the law says that Tibet is yet an unresolved conflict, and it should be resolved under international law. The second element of the law says that Tibetan people have the right to self-determination, which is following up on the 1961 General Assembly Resolution of the United Nations. And the third element of that law is to negate or not accept China's narrative that Tibet has been part of China since ancient times. So that is why I keep carrying two books with me, one by Michael Van Walt, Van Prague, Tibet Brief 2020, and there's also a Chinese professor, because they both looked at Tibetan history from two different perspectives. Michael Van Walt looked at uh, Tibet history from an legal, international legal perspective, and he proves that whether it was Tibet Yuan relation, Yuan is that period when Mongols ruled China from 1271 to 1368. And then the Mo Mongols were overthrown by the Mings, who are real Han Chinese, and uh, they ruled China from 1368 to 1644. And then the Mings were overthrown by the Qings, who are Manchus. The societal perspective of Chinese people is that Manchus are not Chinese. And we have our parallel history, where when the Manchus, when the Mongols ruled China, we had a Sakyapa treaty, the dynasty. When Mings were ruling, we had three dynasties, the Pamadrupa dynasty, Rimpumpa dynasty, and Tepasangpa dynasty, till 1642. And the fifth Dalai Lama took over the spiritual and temporal leadership of Tibet in 1642, two years before the Qings overthrew the Mings in China. So uh, you have this Michael's book, and then there is one Professor Lao, who was a Chinese. When he was in his university days, he used to be intrigued by this question as to why Chinese government is asking every government to say Tibet is part of PRC. Because the Chinese government has been saying Tibet has been part of China since ancient times. If it has been part of China since ancient times, then why is Chinese government asking governments to say Tibet is part of PRC now? So that is why he, after his retirement, he took out all the historical, imperial historical documents from the Communist Party website, <clears throat> and now he has come out with a book arguing as to how imperial China, if you can consider the Mongols and Manchus also as Chinese dynasties, then how imperial China has not considered Tibet as part of China. So this was a shift in uh, our strategy because we still are very committed to middle way, finding a negotiated nonviolent solution. But at the same time, if there are no recognition for the polarities, when we say middle way, there has to be polarities. So one polarity is the present situation of occupied Tibet under the repressive Chinese government. And the other polarity is the historical status of Tibet as an independent state. So if there is no recognition for this, then there is no value for middle way. There is no leverage for middle way. That is why when I travel around in this, to, to these days, I tell governments that if you keep repeating the statement that Tibet is part of PRC, then you are going against international law because we were forcefully invaded by China in 1951 and 50, and then we were forced to sign this 17-point agreement. That is the only one agreement we have with Communist China on the threat of war. So whether it's happening to Ukraine today or it happened to Tibet 74 years ago, it was the same international law. It mm -hmm. is the same international law. 
And the second thing we tell the international community is that if you, you keep saying Tibet is part of PRC, and then on the other hand you keep saying we support negotiations between Representative His Holiness Dalai Lama and the Chinese government. So you're contradicting yourself. You are removing the very ground for negotiation when every country in this world keeps repeating this statement that Tibet is part of PRC. Then where is the reason for China to come talk to us? Then the third thing we tell them is, why is Chinese government asking every government to say Tibet is part of PRC? Why not Mongolia? Why not Uyghurs? Why not Manchuria? Why only Tibet? Because the Chinese government knows that they have no legitimacy of their rule in Tibet, right. and they are trying to seek that legitimacy from the international community. And I think it should be noted that, you know, in the State Department reports, it used to say Tibet is part of China. It doesn't say that anymore. The U.S. has changed, and it's re removed that language. And I would hope that we would... Are you trying to get other governments to remove that kind of language and to not say that Tibet is part of China? We're waiting for the U.S. election to get over and then see how we can work with the Congress and the State Department okay. to work with other like-minded countries to take similar positions so that China will be forced to come and talk to us.